This is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rhymes. Everybody's talking about Ferguson in New York, and we're talking about the murders by police officers, but who is talking about real love? Who is talking about real love? You see, love make you feel my pain. Love don't stop in Ferguson. Love don't stop in New York. Love never stops. But what has happened to the Quitman 10 plus 2 in Brooks County, Georgia concerning voting rights and how the state of Georgia have abused these 12 outstanding black African American people and yet the world the civil rights leaders, for the most part, are quiet. Nothing from the Democratic Party. They are all quiet. The Secretary of State, Brian P. Kemp, in Georgia, is quiet. Attorney General Sam Olin is quiet. Governor Nathan Deal circumvented the power of the black vote in Brooks County, Georgia. No Al Sharpton. No Jesse Jackson. No big wheels of the hundred black men or any other civil rights organization. So where is the real love? We talk about Ferguson and we talk about the problems. But what about the newly elected black mayors here in the state of Georgia, such as Charles, James Charles Brown in Quitman, Georgia? What about the mayor of Meigs, Georgia, Linda Harris, arrested twice, given two criminal trespass. Both of her brothers received trespass, received criminal trespasses and jailed. What about Dawson, Georgia, Chris Wright, that was shot six times with Jesse re-elected as mayor of that city. Yet no one had been brought up on charges. What about Lumpkin, Georgia, where in a sitting white female called the newly elected black mayor, Charles Gibson, a nigger. And when we call the civil rights organizations and other governmental bodies in the state of Georgia, we can't hear nothing. Where is the love? Where is the civil rights organizations? Where is the dream of Martin Luther King? We talk about King and we talk about Malcolm, but where is the real love? Mary Ann Whippaloo in Gordon, Georgia, from the day she was elected, She's been catching hell on the backside of heaven. Where is 60 minutes, 48 hours, Dateline, and the rest of them? It is as if though we are in China, Russia, or some other third world communist nation. And nobody want to talk about it. The mistreatment that that mayor is going through. And it seems as if though she walks alone, except for locals, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry and the Big Shots. All this going on here in the state of Georgia. It's like it was in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Only difference is, many of our black leaders say, I got mine, and you get yours. You will find all of this on my YouTube channel, Boston GBR. CNN, Victor Blackwell knows about all of this. Oh, yeah, and he know about me, too. Kendrick Johnson found dead in Lyons County High School Gymnasium, January the 11th, 2013. They took his all of his major body parts. They're still missing until this day. Sheriff Prine in Lyons County denied this family the right to even view their son's body after he was found dead. Many unanswered questions. I'm asking you to Google all of these things that I have 
mentioned. They are not things, they are incidents in the real world. Not in Afghanistan, not in Pakistan, but right here where we stand in the state of Georgia. Eric Holder of the Department of Justice are fully aware of this. We sent them DVDs about the equipment 10 plus 2 and how elderly citizens were intimidated by the GBI and the Secretary of State. We told the Secretary of State how Brooks County School Attorney Dick Mitchell paid $1,500 to get a private investigator to come in and investigate the equipment 10 plus 2, who are the most outstanding citizens in Brooks County. Lula Smart was tried once by a jury of only one or two whites on the jury and was a mistrial. So the state of Georgia tried again and there was one or two. On the second trial, it was a mistrial. So no blacks except one or two on both of those trials or the third trial, a majority black jury found Lula Smart not guilty on all 30 to 40 charges brought forth by District Attorney David Miller, the GBI, the Secretary of State Brian P. Kemp, all seemed to circumvent the black vote, reminding us of the 1857 Supreme Court ruling, wherein the Dred Scott decision has become a landmark case back in the day, which read as follows, that no black man had any rights that a white man was bound to respect. What about me, George Boston Rhymes? I was the first one to start reporting on the Kendrick Johnson case under the ghetto free press. And so the Lyons County Sheriff Department put me under a criminal trespass without justification or notification. And this month marked 18 months that I've been under this criminal trespass. I've been forbidden to go to any football games, can't even go to graduations of my family members and loved ones and friends because I am banned for nothing. I am a retired military veteran of 21 years, and yet the Lowndes County Sheriff Department, the state of Georgia, or anybody in the United States of America will remove me in writing from this criminal trespass that was illegal and unjustified. And I was never notified, except on May the 25th as I was going on to the property of Lowndes County High School when Deputy Thomas said to me, you cannot go on any part of the school property or you will be arrested by orders of Wes Taylor, the superintendent of the Lowndes County High School. And so my friend John Robinson, a minister of Antioch Baptist Church, went in to sat down and talk with Wes Taylor. And Wes Taylor said he never asked the sheriff department to issue nothing against me, but he said that the sheriff told him that they are working on something on me. Yeah, they were working something on me. There's nothing to work on me. It's all about the KJ case, and the KJ case is the appendant. And so... When I contacted the NAACP and other civil rights organizations, they said nothing. So what can we do if the civil rights organizations cannot meet us where we need them? What good is my membership card in my wallet if they can't come up and help us here in the state of Georgia? I, I along with all the civil rights organizations here in South Georgia, have been talking about the trouble here in Valdosta and Lyons County. Do you not know that Valdosta and Lyons County gives home the Moody Air Force Base, Valdosta State University, Kindaloo Golf Course, Francis Lake, Georgia Military College, and Wildgrass Technical College, along with many more historic and well worthy and deserving monuments. But do you not know that anybody can come to to, to, to Valdosta, Georgia, just like I did, and they could be stopped by the Lyons County Sheriff Department and told that you were under a criminal trespass warning without justification or notification. And when you write to the governmental leaders in the state of Georgia, they'll turn their head the other way. So the question remains, my beautiful brothers and sisters, who still have a conscience and a heart left, who still have a conscience and a heart left, 
The question remains, how many of our sons, how many of our daughters have been arrested in jail, in prison, or on death row because of what happened to me that nobody said anything? It is a sad, sad scenario. I'm asking you to look at this channel, Boston GBR, and see if anybody can disapprove me on anything that I've said. Then call CNN, call ABC Nightline, and ask them, why have they ignored all of this newsworthy information that I'm giving to you? Call Tyler Perry and tell him, we are tired of entertainment now. We're tired of entertainment. Our children are dying, and we need his reporters. Tell Oprah Winfrey that we are tired of entertainment now. We've been entertained too much. We have been the gladiators in the football arena, the basketball arena, while they tell us to go to hell along with our children. And it is indeed time for us to talk about the real love of Jesus Christ. We should stop talking about Muhammad, Allah if we're not going to stand up for what is right in God's world. What need is it for me to fill the churches on Sunday, fill the mosque on the alley slum at Jumal on Friday, or go to the synagogues on the Sabbath, and yet I can't get involved in the saving of human life? What would Jesus do? What would Martin Luther King do? And what would the devil do? The devil wouldn't do nothing. The devil say, that's not my business. That's your business. And so there, the devil in his church, he just go down in between four walls and play little games on behalf of the wicked who masquerade as the righteous. And so Jesus said in 832, of the book of St. John. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set and make you free. Brothers and sisters, I say to you with everything that is within me, with all that I try to do, all the places and towns that I go, very few people will even give me a dime to help me in the struggle. Al Sharpton came to Valdosta. He stayed one couple of hours, and he was out. Jesse Jackson came here years ago and he was in and took membership and took money and didn't even set up an organization and he was out. I was stationed here in 1975 and I've been on the case ever since. Every time I come back here and I retired in 1991. Do you not know again that Valdosta and Lowes County leads the state of Georgia in jail deaths? 31 jail deaths from 1994 to 2009, and from 2009 to 2014, they won't even publish it, and nobody give a heaven about it. Your governor don't ask about it. Your secretary of state don't ask about it. The Georgia uh, attorney general don't ask about it. Eric Holder, the Justice Department, have been told about it, but nobody seems to care. I'm not talking about Afghanistan, Pakistan, or Iran. I'm talking about here right here where we stand in the state of Georgia, in the United States of America. And so I believe that God is allowing the whole world to let America prove to the Islamic world what a real democracy looked like. We are taught in civics lessons how good a democracy is. Look at all these black men that are murdered outright. What will the world say to America? What will wor the world say to the black preachers? What would they say about Islam in the West? What would they say about the Jews in the West? What they say about the Hindu and the Buddhist, what will they say? They will say, we see your religion. They'll say, we see your Jesus. They'll say, we know what you're all about and we know about your God. We see what your God encourages and we see what your God has done. 
And so they are saying we are looking for another God. We are looking for another Jesus. No doubt they are looking for a Jesus who wants for their neighbor the same thing they want for themselves and their own children. They are looking for a God who says, I have no respect of persons. The same thing I want for Israel is what I want for Palestine. The God that we are looking for is the God who said, I am that I am, and you can't make me what you want me to be. As you throw the brick and hide your hand, as you pollute the waters, pollute the air, then you say you are a servant of Jesus Christ. You say you are a servant of Allah. You say you're a servant of Jehovah. You say you're a servant of God. But where is your love? Regardless of what your denomination, regardless of what your persuasion, the question is, where's your love? Where's your love? If you got love, your love will make you feel the pain of Mary Whippaloo and Gordon, who they are trying to run out of office. If you have real love, you will go to Meg's, Georgia, and help Linda Harris. You wouldn't ignore her black community. NAACP leaders, Southern Christian leadership, black caucus, Operation Push. You would go to Dawson, Georgia and ask Chris Wright, what can we do for you? You will go to Lumpkin, Georgia and ask, what can we do, brother? Being called a nigger in 2014. You would go to Davisboro. And as George Ivory, what are you going through, brother? Oprah Winfrey would go to Warrington, Oprah. Tyler Perry would be in Davisboro. And beyond question, Jesse Jackson would be in Gordon, Georgia, to see what they are doing to that mayor. And she's in the Church of God in Christ. Where are the bishops in the Church of God in Christ while your member is going through all of this? Somebody got to tell it. Somebody got to stop talking about a dream. Somebody got to ream out of the dream of Dr. King, a new reality, so our children can breathe and they won't continue to die on the streets. Before there was a Ferguson there was the week of terror in Brooks and Lyons County, Georgia, where 12 of the 25 blacks were murdered outright in 1918. There was no grand jury called. Those mob members got away free. And then Mary Turner, the husband of Hayes Turner, was pregnant in her eighth month of pregnancy. And they cut the baby from her womb. And when it fell, a white mob member took the heel of his boot and crushed the head of that baby. The name of those mob members was sent to the governor of the state of Georgia. Nobody had been brought up on charges. And yet you're going to justify what happened to these recent murders by law enforcement. In Rosewood, in 1923, those black people had to run out of Rosewood trying to make it to Gainesville to a place of safety. And many of them was murdered. No grand jury was called. No grand jury. No grand jury. Moore's Ford Bridge, we just had a white Caucasian to come up and give us information to the representative Tyrone Brooks and the former state president of the state of Georgia, Edward DuBose. We took all of this information and we sent it to Eric Holder, the Justice Department, to open this case. The NAACP, Benjamin, anyway, all these big wheels got the information, but nothing has been done about it. So what do you expect our children to do? And when something happens, you tell us to keep calm. You tell us to be peaceful. But hell, nobody's peaceful with us. Haven't finished yet. Quitman 10 plus 2 was brought up on bogus charges about voting rights and that they had done something illegal. Myself, along with the late Pastor Calvin Benjamin, walked the streets in Quitman. And it's all about love, you see. I went because it's all about love. And do you not know the same thing happened in Madison, Florida? They got voting rights problems in Willacoochee, Georgia. 
Nine were arrested in, I mean, nine were arrested in Madison, Florida. Some of them plea bargain out, but the Quitman 10 said no. And now I just understand they dropped the charges on the other 11 of the Quitman 10 plus two after Lula Smart won, uh, won her day in court. First, she had a mistrial, second mistrial, third, they dropped all charges. And do you not know that court case lasted 19 days as I close? Do you not know ABC, CNN, nobody, no television station, no newspaper, no radio, nobody was in the courtroom but me, the ghetto free press, when it come down to recording so the historic record would not be lost. Lost, and I don't live in Brooks County. I used my gas to drive down, and many of the people didn't even say thank you. Brother Rhymes, and when the charges were dropped, the people that should have called me and said, Rhymes, the charges were dropped. They didn't even call me to tell me. Georgia charges and the, uh, against uh, the rest of the remaining of it, they didn't tell me nothing. I had to find it out for myself. This is the world we are living in. Jesus said, and ye shall know the truth. For only the truth shall set us free. And so, with all that I've done, by the inspiration of my God, I walked in Brooks County in 75, and I walked right on through many other incidences. Walked through Willie James Williams. Walked through a host of people being beat up in the jail and losing their loved ones, and I can't hardly even get a thank you. And I want you young people to understand something. When you start on this journey, don't expect black folk who are in the higher circles to respect you, nor, re nor tell you thank you, nor support you. Please, don't be fooled. There's something about love that makes you feel my pain. And that's what happened to me. I fell in love with a prostitute. And the prostitute is my own people. For they are the ones who will tell me, Brother Rines, what you're doing are crazy. You are helping people that don't appreciate what you're doing. They won't support you. But what they don't know is that I get more support from white people. Nah, 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 nah. I know you won't hate, but I want the truth. And the truth is, most of my encouragement and gas money comes from white people. And if it was not true, Brother George Boston Ryans wouldn't say it. But I want you black folk to know, just because you go to church and holler hallelujah and hallelujah don't mean that you're going into the heaven with the righteous. You're going into a heaven, all right. But it just might not be with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It may be another God. For our God says, to help the widows and the orphans. St. Luke 418 was branded in my mind at the age of 18. For the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, the recovering of sight and to the blind, and to repeat the acceptable year of the Lord. To set at liberty them that are bruised. And when you get where all you want to do, just go to church on Sunday and pop your fingers on Saturday and wake up Monday morning, go back to your job and play the same fool and tool that you've always been, that your ancestors have been, and you won't pick up a book and study about the Crusades. You won't pick up the book and study about Mary Magdalene and the life beyond the Bible. You won't pick up a book to even to read about King James and what happens, or you won't go back to the ancient step pyramids that King Khufu built. You don't know your own history, and because you don't know your history, the world has made modern fools out of you. And, and I'm not boasting. 
because I was in the same bag. It's only when I step outside of the box of, of incarceration and indoctrination that I begin to think with something that somebody else did not give me. You see, true love will not let you just go to church. True love will not just let you join an organization and then you ignore what goes on in your community. Many of our beloved pastors have never been to a city council meeting, could care less about county commissioners meeting, could care less about the federal dollars that come into the community to help lift black and white right people and other people out of poverty, but they won't say a thing. And that is because they are of another mindset. They have allowed the spell of the Leviathan to take over every aspect of their mind. And so I'm going to continue to say, if you love God, you'll love God's people. But if you're masquerading as a servant of God, you will never feel the pain that Jesus felt. Nah, you will feel your purse, your wallet, your pocketbook, and your banking account. You will put movies on, Dr. Perry, Tyler Perry, that is. But you won't come to these little towns that need your help. You got to, you, you, you in a position now. Oprah Winfrey, and I call on her so much. But then again, it's not her responsibility. God called us men folk to be the leaders. This is the Ghetto Free Press, and I'm George Boston Rines, doing what I do because it must be done. And though we suffer, and though we die, by the blood of the Lamb, we shall overcome. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come, will separate me from the real God. I've had enough of the fake gods, and I've had enough of the fake preachers, and I've had enough of the fake followers of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the real Jesus. I'm not talking about the other. You see, there are many more, many Jesus. But the real Jesus, the real God, will make it too unbearable for you to ignore these newly elected black mayors going through hell on the backside of heaven, and you don't say nothing. When I look at James, Mayor James Charles III, let me, let me get that right. Mayor James Charles Brown III, or Mayor Linda Harris in Meigs, Georgia, or Mayor Charles Gibson in Lumpkin, Georgia, or Chris Wright in Dawson, Georgia, or the mayor in Davisboro, Georgia, or the mayor in Warrington, Georgia, George Ivory, or Mary Ann Quipaloo in Gordon, Georgia, and several other cities here in the state of Georgia. If my Jesus could let me just ignore the pain that these black mayors, newly elected black mayors are going through, if my Jesus could allow me to be quiet and not say nothing on their behalf, not to go to their cities and report what happened and expose it and send it to the governor and the secretary of state and to the attorney general, uh, 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 Eric Holder. If my Jesus wouldn't let me do that, I wouldn't have no use for that Jesus. I have no use for a God. I don't even want to listen to a God. I don't even want to go to a heaven of the people that go to a God that can allow our children to be killed outright. These black women, these mayors in particular, to go through all of this by themselves. I don't want to go to heaven with you. If your God will allow you to sit back, sit back and say nothing, I don't want to go to your heaven. I don't even want to go to your, I don't want to see your Jesus. I know another Jesus. I know a Jesus. That rode into Jerusalem. He was an outside agitator. 
And outside agitation is what gets your clothes clean in your washing machine. For if there was no agitator or equivalent thereof, your clothes would never be clean. And so the editor of the Wilkinson County Post, who a denigrating Mayor Whippaloo, in the most inhumane manner, painting her picture as the evil one, chose to say to me that I was an outsider and that I was not from God. I'm going to close by saying to you what I said to her. When I served for 21 years, including during the Vietnam War, I didn't just serve the people here in Lowndes County, Georgia. I served every county and every state and city in the United States of America, including Alaska and Hawaii and our outlying territories. That's what I did, Miss Judy Bailey. And since you all want to call me what you call Jesus and Dr. King, an outside agitator, let me close by giving this to you because I love you just that much. Do you not go know that in the book of Genesis, the first word in the Bible is I-N in the beginning. And do you know the first letters are capitalized I-N? That means that you were not in the beginning. But the book says in the beginning. So that was the starting point for many. But since God was not in the beginning because he said in the beginning, God was not in the beginning because the Bible says that God has no beginning and he has no ending. Therefore, my beautiful white Caucasian sister, God himself, according to you, I guess, was an outside agitator. He was an outside agitator. But he came in to help us. And so I don't care who comes in the, your city if they come to help you. In my opinion, you ought to receive them. And to all of you who are not in the struggle, you are sentencing your own children to hell and damnation because you won't stand up. God has never used a coward in his program. Y'all have a nice day. Galatians 6 and 7 says, For God is not mocked, for whatsoever man so that shall he also read. I love you all. If you find something in this video that is not in and out of love, I want to apologize for that. But in the end, only truth, right, and justice will win in the end. And all of God's people will say, Amen and Amen. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Bye-bye. We go. Greetings. I'm George Boston Rhymes, and I'm in Gordon, Georgia, and I just attended the Gordon City Council meeting last night and I found it to be uh, very interesting and I'm trying my best to give you the best because you deserve no less. When I look out across the cities here in the state of Georgia I find it extremely difficult to accept what the political spectrum and the government of the state of Georgia has done to these newly elected black mayors and it seems strange that nobody will really address the issues uh, here in the state of Georgia. We have a black mayor in Quitman, Georgia, that uh, I believe need to be interviewed and reported on the condition that he's experienced as mayor of that small city of Quitman. Also, uh, Meigs, Georgia, with Linda Harris, the first um, female mayor, I understand, in Meigs, Georgia and uh, the things that she has gone through, arrested twice, re to receive two criminal trespass warnings, and she violated no law according to a retired 30-year 
police chief in Meigs, Georgia. Her two brothers um, were also arrested and received trespass um, papers as well. Then I went to Dawson, Georgia with the Honorable and newly elected again for the second time, Chris Wright, mayor of Dawson, Georgia. And then from Dawson, Georgia, I learned, that, and by the way, uh, this mayor, Chris Wright, was shot five or six times and left in his yard for dead for reasons yet to be determined or to find out who perpetrated those uh, acts of violence against an American citizen here in the homeland of the United States of America. Then I was called to Gordon, Georgia, and Gordon, Georgia is where the historic Mary Ann Whippleloo is in office, and she is the first female mayor of this city. She is also the first black mayor of this city, and of course, she is the first um, for three things. She has broken the record, and she will be a part of the historic archival record. And once again, she is the first black female. She is the first female mayor, and of course, she is the first black mayor ever to be a mayor in this little small town of less than 3,000 people. Uh, then I was called by people in government to another city called Lumpkin, Georgia. I'd never been to Lumpkin before, but a sitting council member, a white female, referred to the newly elected mayor, uh, Charles Gibson, as a nigger. Uh, this white council lady uh, called this sitting mayor the N-word, and they asked me not to use the N-word because that's not what the councilwoman said. And this is why I call it as it was, and that's a nigger. Uh, she referred to him to a white police chief in Lumpkin. And of course, uh, this particular Caucasian fireman did not appreciate that those words are the venom that those word that word generates and so he called the uh, chief of police i understand and of course an incident was filed and the rest is history then i had the opportunity to talk to george ivy of warrington georgia whose uh city is perhaps the worst of all of them although for whatever reason i can't seem to get the right people to speak on uh, the tape or to go in front of the camera. I don't know whether it's because of fear or what, but um, their problems have been highlighted and well known uh, in that area, but yet nobody seems to address those issues. Then I was called to another city called Davisboro, Georgia, and of course there are two people living in fear of the power structures that be. And so I'm going to say to Governor Nathan Deal, Secretary of State, Attorney General Sam Olins, that sooner or later, I am confident as a retired military veteran that sooner or later, somebody will be forced to look at what is going on in these southern towns where newly elected black mayors um, took the oath of office as mayor, yet they are being fought every step of the way, in many cases by their fellow council members, uh, by the attorneys and by other unknown people in these communities because it seems as if though the people in power does not want to give up power. And we've always said that Georgia and the United States is a nation of laws. Well, if Georgia and if the United States are indeed a nation of laws, then in my most humble opinion, then we should prove to the world that this is the case. And we do that by having open government and when the people in these communities write and call out for the governor and other elected officials in the state of georgia to step up and assist these communities that are being torn apart uh, people have been arrested people could be hurt maimed or killed and yet the elected officials in the state of georgia as well as the department of justice under Eric Holder have refused to intervene even with the Quitman 10 plus 2 which is a disgraceful voting rights case 
that we believe bogus from start to finish and after four years that case is still going on. Miss Lula Smart just won her case. Uh, the state of Georgia filed 30 to 40 alleged voter fraud charges against her. She was found not guilty on all the charges. And after 19 days, no news media in the United States of America even covered that high profile voting rights case, proving to the American people and the world that when it comes down to black African-American voting, that it's another story. It reminds us of, of the old 1860 uh, Dred Scott decision, which said that no black man had any rights that a white man had to respect. And so we are going to stay on these issues because it is indeed carrying on the dream of Dr. King. Although Dr. King dream have subsided and we see that his dream in terms of integration, integration was definitely a failure for the black man, woman and their children. Integration. We became integrated, but we did, we did not become interconnected. And because we did not become interconnected, integration was a complete failure. And I kind of agree today that no one should want to be with somebody that does not want to be with them. And so we must instill in our children that they are the ancestors of the children of tomorrow, but they also need to know that their ancestors was the ones that built the pyramid in the Giza Plateau, and that they were the artisans and the craftsmen. They were the master builders. And it is indeed time that the original Jews and the ancient Ethiopian people step up to the plate and take their rightful place in God's world today. Once again, I am George Boston Rines. I give you this information because you need to know this. You need to be educated. God has put everything that you need within your body. All we have to do is find the right teacher to pull out of us what our creator and the God of our ancestors has instilled within us. Once again, this is the Ghetto Free Press and I'm George Boston Rhymes, and I do what I do because it must be done. Have a nice day. God bless you. From the backwoods of South Georgia, the Ghetto Free Press, the voice of the people. Bye-bye.